Hi there, this is Ajit here. During the Agile workshop, which I take at the organization level, I am quite frequently asked, how does the capacity planning impact the velocity or what is the relationship between velocity and the capacity? I do explain the relationship by giving examples and I thought I should extend this session to the wider audience. Let's first understand what is the velocity and the capacity of the team. Velocity is the pace or the rate with which the team delivers the stories. Rate is measured in terms of the story points. Every story is assigned a story point during the process of Agile estimation. This is a separate session which I recorded on Agile estimation. You can go and refer that. Capacity is the total available productive hours of the team. Then what are the non-productive hours? Non-productive hours are those which are spent by the Scrum team on ceremonies like backlog refinement, daily stand-up, sprint planning, sprint reviews, retrospective. Additionally, they may be engaged in some plan and ad hoc catch-ups with different groups like IT support groups for network and server issues, management discussion, appraisal discussions, etc. Out of 8 hours that a person is spent in office, we normally assume that a person is productive only for 6.5 hours per day because he is spending some time in ceremonies and catch-ups also. But this figure varies for setup to setup, organization to organization. Let's see one example. How do we do the capacity planning? Let's assume there is a two weeks sprint that is 10 days. There are five resources A, B, C, D, E. Resource A is available for full 10 days. So his productive available hours are 10 multiplied by 6.5. B is absent for two days. So his available productive hours are 52 is available only for 5 days that is 33.5 is again available for full 10 days so that is 65 is absent for one day so 58.5 the total of these hours becomes the total capacity of the team for that sprint what is the maximum capacity of the team and everybody would have been present in the office for full 10 days everybody would have clogged 65 hours to the productivity the sum of that would have, would have been the maximum capacity of the team that is 325. Now let's see how does the relationship between velocity and the capacity evolves sprint over sprint. In the very first sprint, team is available in full capacity that is 325 and they are knocking off the velocity of 32 story point. In the second sprint, again team is in full capacity and they are knocking off the velocity of 38 story point which is a slight improvement there. In the third sprint, Team is only available for 241 hours as some of the members has gone on the leave. So they are knocking off a velocity of 25 story point. In the fourth sprint, again team is in full capacity. Everybody is present for 10 days. They are knocking off a velocity of 40 story point, which is a slight improvement from 38. Now we can see a trend emerging here. When the team is in full capacity, they are knocking off a velocity of 32 and then 38 and 40. What we can do, we can take the average out of this velocity and figure out the velocity of the team there. Or to be more realistic, what we can do is we can ignore the lower end side of it and the higher end side of it and we can go with the middle figure of the velocity that is 38. So 38 becomes the velocity of the team based on which we can make predictions for the upcoming sprints. As long as we know the capacity of the team. For example, for sprint 5, we know the capacity is 265. For sprint 6, we know the capacity of the is 273. We can easily calculate the velocity of the team and keep the client apprised on it so that there are no surprises. Let's see. When the capacity is 265, the velocity will be 38 divided by 325 multiplied by 265 that comes out to be 31. So 31 is the projected velocity for sprint 5. For sprint 6, 38 divided by 325 multiplied by 273 this comes out to be 32. So 32 is the projected velocity of the sprint 6. We can show the relationship between velocity and the capacity planning using this bidirectional chart. 
This chart will make more sense to the customer and they can set the right expectation from the team for the subsequent sprints. On the left hand side is the velocity of the team, on the right hand side is the capacity of the team. As you can see, for the first sprint, the capacity is at 325 and velocity is just 32. On the second sprint, velocity is increased to 38 but the capacity remains the same, at the same level. In the third sprint, the capacity is reduced down to 241 and velocity is also coming down to 225. For the fifth sprint, for the fourth sprint, the capacity has gone up to 325 and velocity also increased to 40. Similarly, for sprint 5 and sprint 6, the capacity is 265 and 273. We can see a dip here and a slight rise to 65 and 273 measuring to this and increase in the velocity from 31 to 32 which measures here. So that's all the relationship between the velocity and the capacity planning. Hope you enjoyed the session. Let me know your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned.